Thanks. Um, so I'm going to share my desktop screen now. And you may see just a slight delay between <clears throat> me doing things and that happening on your end. But right now you should see my desktop with a graphic in front of you. And um, this graphic is called a concept map. And I'll share a, a link to this map with everyone who's attended the webinar um, after the webinar is over. And what you'll see when you get to it on your own is that each concept has, or many of the concepts have, associated resources attached to them. So in this case, a couple of PDF documents um, that are helpful. So I encourage you to take a look at this sort of in more depth when you get the link. Um, and as Carla mentioned, this webinar is third in a series. So in the previous two, we talked about the basics of a postdoc position and then negotiating your postdoc position. And some of this information I'm not going to review again today. And the information I'm kind of skipping over is grayed out. But again, you can oh. review that information on your own when you receive a link to the concept map. But I am going to do a basic overview, um, just starting out with what is a postdoc position. So a postdoc is a placement for the purpose of gaining scientific technical and other professional skills that advance your professional career. It's temporary in nature, um, usually a couple of years, depending on your discipline and, and the type of postdoc position. And the heart of a postdoc position is full-time research. A postdoc position should give you the opportunity to gain new research skills and, and research knowledge and to publish and present. And some postdoc positions provide some other um, professional development type support. But ideally, a position is an opportunity to learn grant writing and publication skills under the advisement of your mentor. Also, ideally, a postdoc position will give you a chance to represent your home institution in presenting research at professional conferences and in public publishing your findings. And some postdoc positions might involve supervising junior lab members um, and that sort of thing. And so you might if you are a current grad student, kind of be asking, is a postdoc for me, and, and how do I tell? And in many fields of life sciences, physics, and chemistry, for instance, a postdoc is basically a prerequisite for a career doing research in that field. I would recommend talking to your advisor, um, your faculty members, and fellow graduate students about the value of a postdoc position in your particular field. And since a postdoc position is focus on research, you should ask yourself whether you have the passion for research that will keep you happy in a, in a couple of years of a research-focused postdoc position. Examine your career goals and the skills and experience that you need to meet those goals. And then talk to your mentors and your advisors and, and fellow students um, about what you need to do to meet those career goals. And you might want to browse postdoc job advertisements to try and get a feel for, is that, are, are those postdoc positions going to help you get where you want to go? In terms of applying, um, you know, preparing early is great. And I'm not going to hit on all of these topics, but a few of the early preparation um, topics are relevant for having a really good positive experience later on once you get into the postdoc position. Um, Setting goals and expectations can be important. You can assess how a postdoc can help you achieve those goals, and then you can prioritize your applications based on what the postdoc position will provide you in regards to furthering your career. Um, I would encourage you to talk to potential advisors about your interest in a future postdoc position, even when you're still a graduate student. Talk to current postdocs also about their experience with different advisors and try to get a sense for uh, who you might want to work with. And also think about talking to current and, if you can, even former lab members of labs that you think you're interested in, in working at. And see, you know, are they happy? Are they publishing? Um, do they have recommendations for people that you sh should consider as a potential postdoc advisor? There are some questions that you can think about asking um, when you apply. And these questions, again, when this information will help you um, determine whether you're going to have a positive experience later on. Um, 
a lot of having that successful postdoc position begins before you've, you've even accepted the position. Um, so that, you know, when you're determining that it's a good fit for you. So um, ask the mentor or, you know, the sponsor for the position what they see as the major benchmarks or goals that would indicate a successful postdoc experience. Ask what their goals are for the postdoc um, and their expectations and see how those align with your own. Your postdoc advisor certainly will be critical to your success and happiness as a postdoc. When you're choosing an advisor, think about the importance of your advisor's prestige versus their mentoring skills and the time that they will have for you. If at all possible, arrange for a personal meeting with the post potential advisor um, and, and really try to talk to other postdocs who have worked with that advisor um, or other postdocs from the same lab. Again, sort of seeing if they are um, happy and publishing and meeting their own goals. And um, you know, you may want to ask about other extra things like are there career planning assistance or professional development available, travel funds, um, you know, what is the salary like, and um, all those baseline questions are good to ask. Um, and make sure that you get a sense for the position and that you will be gaining new skills and knowledge that will help you advance your career. Um, a position that doesn't stretch your abilities uh, really won't be as as much value for your for your future career. Um, and then again, you know, you can ask ask some questions about um, the general climate of the lab and the institution, what your classification will be as a postdoc, what your salary will be. And then once you get into your postdoc position, there are a few basic things um, that I'd like to talk about in terms of making the most of that position. Um, so again, it's kind of back to the goals and the expectations, but set aside some time before you get started in the position to review your goals and expectations for that position. Think about the skills and um, training opportunities, skills, research skills that you're trying to build, and think about where you want to be, where you want to be when you're done with that postdoc. And remember that gaining the right skills can make a big difference in your career advancement. So. Um, don't forget about the public speaking skills, leadership skills, computer skills, teaching and mentoring skills, um, in addition to things like publishing and grant writing and research skills, which are also important, but you know maybe the things that jump to mind first. Establish early and frequent communication with your advisor. That is key to a successful position. And as a postdoc, you share the responsibility of clear communication with your advisor. Discuss early on with your advisor your goals and expectations, and refine them as necessary with your advisor's input. Aim for some regular self-assessment. Take the time out to check in on how you're doing and how you're meeting your goals throughout the position. And if you're feeling off track, you're not meeting your goals, um, definitely discuss this with your advisor sooner rather than later and see how you can change things to get things you know, back on track. It's also important to be proactive. Seek feedback on your work on a regular basis. Uh, be proactive in discussing any ethical issues or policies regarding authorship um, early on in the position. And really work on developing your professional network so that you can move on into your new career once your postdoc is done. In particular, make sure you get to professional conferences and take advantage of you know, any and all networking opportunities that you can find. And then finally, seek out some resources on campus. Some campuses have postdoc associations on campus. Uh, you, you can take a, take a look at what resources and support mechanisms are on your particular campus. The National Postdoc Association is also a valuable resource. And I think Dr. Katz is going to talk more about it. Um, but it also it offers a toolkit for postdocs if you don't have a postdoc association on campus and you want to start one. So those are just some general, brief general overview type tips. And what I'd like to do now is pass it over to Dr. Tiffany Katz, and I'm going to bring up her presentation. Okay, hello everyone. Um, 
I'm Dr. Tiffany Cass. Uh, next slide, please. I first would like to introduce myself a little. I received a bachelor's degree from the Pennsylvania State University in animal biosciences and microbiology. And that's where I began my independent research as a McNair scholar in allergic asthma. Uh, I then earned a PhD from Rutgers University in endocrinology and animal biosciences. There I founded our graduate student organization in animal sciences, and I became an SREB scholar, which is uh, the Southern Regional Education Board um, Fellowship. I'm currently a postdoc at the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute and the Women's Cancer Research Center, where I'm studying breast cancer and uh, the role epigenetics plays in breast cancer development and prevention. I'm also the University of Pittsburgh's uh, Chair of Outreach for our Postdoctoral Association. So uh, I've told you these things in case anyone would like to connect with me or has any questions on uh, anything like that, please feel free to send me an email just to um, make, an, make a connection. Um, so today I'm going to tell you a little bit about what a postdoctoral scholar is. We're going to talk about how to ensure your success, particularly having passion and planning, publishing, gaining funding, and networking and I will go over some conclusions. So what does a postdoctorate look like? Um, one quote from the National Academies is that postdocs have become indispensable to the science and engineering enterprise, performing a substantial portion of the nation's research in every setting. So we're actually very important and prestigious, although you may feel like a rat running on a wheel sometimes, we're very important. Um, the NSF estimates that there are between 43 and 89,000 postdocs, and it's actually very hard to get an estimate of how many postdocs. It's even been difficult at Pitt because postdocs often have different titles through the Human Resources Department, and therefore it's hard to tally them up because some of them are called something different, um, which I believe the National Postdoc Association is trying to address. Next slide. So, um, the postdoctoral position has gone through some changes. Originally, this was a very short training position and pretty rare. And then it began becoming more abundant and very open ended, which caused uh, the begin of the permanent postdoc post position, where people were remaining in their postdoc positions for 10 or 15 years, which is not a good sign. So more recently, universities have begun capping the amount of time an individual can be a postdoc, which is a good thing because you should be moving on from your training positions to your permanent position as soon as you're ready. Um, there are approximately 60% of postdocs are international and have temporary visas. The average postdoc is in their 30s and married, and many have children. Although we all have earned PhDs, the mean salary actually is a bit lower than those who have bachelor's degrees at about an average, a national average of 38K a year. But we're really investing our time in this training experience to hopefully begin earning more when we um, move into our permanent positions. And where do we go? So actually a lot, 40% ends up in business or industry or the private sector, nine in government agencies, but most, 49%, remain in education, including tenure track research positions, um, instructors, and other education administrative positions. Next slide. So how can you ensure your success? Um, I'll talk about each of these a little bit more. Um, so you really want to have passion in your position. This will be a very difficult profession if you don't love your work, so try and have fun with it. Um, you want to have a plan and publish, obtain funding and network, and one of the most important things that I didn't include on this slide but I will talk about within each of these topics is choosing your mentor because your mentor will be integral in ensuring your success and ensuring that each of these um, things are accomplished. Next slide, please. So one of the most important things um, 
to think about is setting goals as a postdoctoral scholar. Do you want to learn specific techniques while you're a postdoc or gain more teaching or mentoring experience? Will you need individual funding um, to set you up for your future goals? And are you planning to have an academic career or more of a non-academic career? And to help you decide on what your goals should be, you can think about these bottom questions, which are, what will my future research entail? Will I want to stay in my current area or will I want to switch? And if you want to switch research, um, areas, the postdoc is the perfect place to begin setting yourself up for that switch. So we all probably have in our minds what we really want to be and what we really want to do, and that's a great start. But you should also think a little bit about what you're willing to do, because you may start off with what you're willing to do in order to get to what you really want to do. And it's always good to have in mind what you absolutely want to avoid doing. And Science Magazine right now has a link on their website for developing your own individual development plan. And you can go through setting up these goals and how you want to achieve these goals um, in a really organized fashion. We just put the link on our um, University of Pittsburgh Postdoctoral Association page if anyone's interested. Next slide, please. Okay, publishing, I'm sure you've all heard the term publish or perish. Unfortunately, that is um, near to the truth. Numbers do count. But some ways to boost your numbers, in addition to having your own first author papers, you can write a review with your um, mentor or a mentor in your department. So often, PIs are asked to write a review and they may turn down that opportunity because they're too busy, but if they knew that there was a postdoc around that wanted to take on this endeavor, they may, have, they may ask you. So if, if you're interested in writing a review, make it known to, um, to your uh, uh, people in your field and in your department, and maybe you'll get to write one. Also, you should be thinking about co-authoring papers with your fellow postdocs and help each other out, because everyone can use a little bit of help, and if you have something to offer, that's wonderful, and you can get a co-author paper. Also, you will end up learning new techniques, and you'll end up learning a little something about something you would not have normally done yourself. So those are all good ways to um, get more publications on your CV. Next slide. So I personally believe that postdocs need funding. Um, if you're not going into an academic setting later, it's not as important, but I think it still makes you look really good if you've gained your own funding. So you should not think that since your PI has the money to support you, that you shouldn't have to do the extra work in writing a grant, because the grant writing process is actually very educational and beneficial. You want to spend your time as a postdoc to prove yourself and make yourself marketable and better your CV. So competing for your own money and actually earning it is a really big boost for you. Um, this also gives you a lot of great practice writing. And if you have a good mentor that's willing to work with you on your writing, that's really fantastic because this is a skill, at least for me, that was really hard to learn. And it will help you greatly. The more grants you write, the more you'll know about writing grants. This also makes you think about your research. You could have planned all these experiments and they could have sounded wonderful in your head. And then you get through them all and at the end, you have all this beautiful data, but it doesn't all quite fit perfectly. So if you really wrote it all up in advance and thought about it in the manner that you have to think about when writing a grant, you would have found those holes with enough time to fix them. Um, so these are all, um, great reasons to in, um, jump into some grant writing early. Next slide, please. So there are many ways to find funding. Your institution can help you. Often the postdoctoral association will have seminars on finding funding, or there will be a university funding counselor. You can go there and tell them about yourself, and they'll tell you what the best um, agencies to apply to are. 
You can also do some web searching on your own. Grants.gov, COS.com, and FoundationCenter.org are great starts. Um, I think on COS.com you can sign up and get email alerts when funding opportunities become available. Um, government agencies often offer the best levels of funding. The NIH, the NSF, the DOD, and the USDA are some agencies that provide research funding in many areas. And also private foundations, things like the American Heart Association or Susan G. Komen Foundation. Also, there's one I didn't put on here called the Ford Foundation that is a really fantastic funding um, opportunity. Previously, in one of the seminars called Preparing and Applying for a Postdoc Position, um, Dr. O'Brien discussed the Ford Foundation uh, Fellowship, so you can refer back to her webinar to learn more about it or just go to the Ford Foundation website. Next slide, please. We can uh, include a link to that webinar video to email you guys. Okay. Uh, networking is also very integral to succeeding as a postdoc. Um, at every conference, you should bring a business card and an elevator talk. And business cards, if you are not provided them by your university, you can make them very easily. Staples has um, a little kit that's less than $20 that you can make your own business card, you can put whatever you want on there, and you can print them out yourself. And you, can, you should always have an elevator talk prepared. So you can practice this with your peers, just two to three minutes long. You want someone to say in an elevator, wow, that is really interesting. Can I have your business card? That's the ultimate goal. Also, Although we might all strive to do talks at conferences, posters can be even better because someone has sought out your particular poster and you get to have a full conversation with them and exchange business cards, whereas in a talk you don't really get to meet the whole audience. So also at conferences you should ask questions and make yourself visible. This can be hard for a lot of people, so you can start trying to do this at your lab meeting and journal clubs then at your departmental seminars and retreats, and eventually at national meetings, you should be asking at least one question at the meetings. People will actually remember you. Another great way to network is to use your invited speakers. If you're really interested in someone's work or like a technique someone does, ask your department to invite them as an invited speaker, and then you can have lunch with them and discuss these um, important issues for you, and you can give them a business card. Um, cold emails can also be helpful, not always, but if you feel like you read someone's papers all the time and you really like some of the things they're doing, send them an email and start a dialogue. You always want to be marketing yourself. Even if you're not on the job market, the postback is pretty short, so by the time you are on the job market, you want some people to be remembering you from things like asking questions at conferences or emails. Next slide, please. So um, lastly, I think joining the National Postdoctoral Association will be very beneficial for all postdocs. The NPA is the voice of American post or postdocs in America, and they really work to enhance the quality of the postdoctoral experience in the U.S. So um, you can find many resources on their website. Membership is free. I've um, provided the link to become a member. Often the universities have um, special memberships where you get an advanced level of membership for free also. Some of the benefits of membership are you get um, subscriptions to some good periodicals. You get reduced registration fees to meetings and discounted services. And lots of opportunities to work on your leadership and professional development. And again, like I said, they are our voice. So if you have concerns, questions, um, any issues, you can always go to them for help. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, postdocs are prestigious and we've earned our positions here. So as I said, you might feel like a workhorse sometimes, but really you're very needed and you should feel um, very worthy. 
You should have passion in your um, research and your postdoc position and have a plan. And um, I will provide uh, the organizers the link to the Science Mag Individual Development Plan, and um, you guys can try working on that. Again, publish, 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 first, first and co-author papers. Um, try and get your own funding. Even if you have, you're very early in your project and it's small, there are some foundations with very small applications, and you can win funding that way for a year or two, and then you'll be eligible for more funding. And also network. And as I said, your mentor is really integral in all of these. You can also use your mentor's network. If you have a question or something really burning issue that you can't find in the literature, you haven't found anywhere, and you ask your mentor, they may say, oh my gosh, I know someone who does exactly that, and they'll connect you with um, their network also. Um, so I really want to thank the organizers and everyone involved for inviting me to speak here tonight. Um, this was a great opportunity. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you, Dr. Katz. That's, that was a great presentation. Um, those of you that have any questions, please feel free to you know, chat them in the chat box as they come up. But we're now going to hear um, from Dr. Abraham. Uh, thank you, Lev, and good evening, everyone. Um, Dr. Katz really covered the ground in terms of, um, I think, ways to make the most of your postdocs. But what I would like to do is take a moment to introduce myself and give you a little bit of the background and how, um, as director of a program, how I approach that. Um, I am director, uh, as, it said, as Liv said in the introduction, um, of the SRAB, the Southern Regional Education Board Doctoral Scholars Program. We are located in Atlanta, Georgia. And we are a effort to address the uh, dearth of underrepresented minority faculty on college campuses. And in addressing that issue, the data is very, very clear in terms of the numbers of minorities who participate in that postdoctoral experience. Um, and so one of the goals of our program was to make sure that we were communicating with our students about the need to seek and get postdoctoral experiences to enhance their opportunities to become competitive in the job market for academic positions. Um, so as a program, one of, the th one of the things we're doing is trying to make sure during our annual meeting uh, to provide our students with a lot of information about the postdoctoral experience. Uh, Dr. Katz is uh, uh, very um, ple pleasantly one of, our, one of my graduates, one of our program's uh, stars, and has done a great job in learning some of the things that we were trying to get across to our students about that postdoctoral experience. And she's outlined many of those, the, 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 the rudiments of making that postdoctoral experience um, pleasurable and getting out of it what you want. What we're trying to make sure is that the students in our program get the kind of experience they want as opposed to the, um, rather than the kind of experience they get. We want, it, we want them to be able to shape the, the, the postdoctoral experience. When I was really getting into the directorship of this program a little over 20 years ago, and I was trying to learn about that postdoctoral experience. I, I did something uh, that Dr. Katz touched on in her presentation in talking about, you know, how you all define the, the, what a postdoc is. And boy, I, 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 that was a real eye-opener to me because I, I went to all the uh, the most likely places that would have post postdocs, which are the, which are the, uh, if you will, the flagship institutions in the 16 states that make up the Southern Regional Education Board, and I was actually shocked to find that many institutions did not, do not have. There are probably many today do not have job classifications in their HR. Um, um, categories called postdocs, and you know, so well, how do how do we count these things? How do we know what a postdoc is if 
if the people doing these hiring don't even can't even define it. And the, the, the further I got into learning what schools how how human resource office offices defined it and as I was as we conducted our annual meeting and I talked to more scholars, it was very interesting that that definition um, is very, very broad. Um, now we, we've approached it during this conversation as as very much a research where one is enhancing their research and uh, research skills and techniques. Um, but I, I have students today who define that as it could be a exclusively teaching experience once they finish school. And it's been fascinating to me to learn the many definitions of what a postdoc is in, in the subsequent years and how it's defined and what we call postdocs. Is. And, and I've also find, found that it is not nearly as narrow as I, I originally thought it was. It is much broader today. Um, one of the other things I would like to emphasize to the, um, to the participants in this, in this webinar this evening is, in, and we emphasize it without, in, in getting a postdoc, it is enormously important that the participants do their homework. And by doing their homework, I am talking about knowing the people that they're going to work with. Um, I believe in the diagram that was put up very early uh, in, this, in, our, in our webinar, you all were covering some of these issues, but I think it's worth repeating that you know, you've got to do your homework in, in terms of the, knowing the people you're going to work with, uh, the place you're going to work, the lab you're going to work in, or the school that you might be teaching in, um, and the types of research one is going to be doing. I have talked to any number of my scholars who come back to me, gone into postdocs, and the experience turned out to be not what they wanted, not what they expected. Um, they didn't get what they, they just had a horrible experience. And, you know, it was a waste of, well, it's from their vantage point, a, a, a waste of a lot of time, a lot of effort, um, and, and, and made them very, very unhappy with uh, the outcome of, of that, that, you know, a year or two years' worth of experience that they thought was actually very useless. A lot, several of my scholars have emphasized to me the importance of defining the postdoctoral experience. And, 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 and defining, I would say, in, I would define as putting that in writing, making sure, Dr. Katz touched on this, making sure that there are explicitly clear expectations on the part of the person seeking the postdoc and the advisor or mentor doing the hiring for that postdoc. I mean, it, it ought to be in writing in terms of what kind of products, what kind of experience, um, because, you know, doing discussions about the postdoc, what that experience is going to be. Um, many times we all think we know what we're talking about, but Put it in writing. I would I would advise everyone uh, to put put it in writing so that there are no misunderstandings of what was being said, um, what one understood to be said. But really have it done so that it is clearly delineated in a written document, point by point. Of you know, I want to get publications out of this. I want to be able to go to conferences. I actually want to have a teaching experience in my postdoc, and that ought to be part of what's written into that contract or the, or the, or the um, employment arrangement. Those are the kinds of things that, that I've heard back from the scholars in my program that they have communicated to me that need to be communicated uh, to the scholars